Hey guys. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Sorry, I am late. I'm coming to you live from my office. <laughs> live from my office. Um, I was having some issues going live. I had the AT&T guy walking up and down the street asking me about my internet provider and asking me about all kind of stuff about my services and the services that I have and I'm like dude I'm trying to go I have something to take care of he wasn't trying to hear it he was trying to sell honey but he was selling to the wrong one because I ain't had time for that but um anyway this is your girl Sean from homeschooling with Sean coming to you live uh today is Tuesday October the 2nd yeah October the 2nd coming here to answer some more of your homeschool questions um so i have a few you know i don't stay before you very long because i know everybody got stuff to do is kids run around is dinner to be cooked is school to be finished is work to be done there's always something to be done so i'm not gonna be before you long so let's get it let's go so um my first question is how do i respond to the negativity about homeschooling okay so here's the thing you have made a decision that is best for you and your family. Not everybody's going to understand that. And if you're looking for the approval of everyone to understand the decision that you made for your family, then you're always going to have that issue. Me personally, I know that there are people who do not agree. I go around certain family members and they ask questions and try to see where the kids are and see if they're learning and all that kind of jazz or whatever, you know, they may say. I don't care. You can say whatever you want to say about homeschooling being what it is. However, I know, my husband and I know what we have decided to do for our children, what we feel is important as far as edu education is concerned. And honestly, I don't have to clear that with anybody but my husband and God. So with that said, slide on, bub. I mean, <laughs> that's all you have to tell them. You can't be worried or concerned about other people's negativity. You just can't. Like that's, you'll drive yourself crazy doing that. So honestly, my advice on that is just to let it go. If you want to address it, address it. If you don't, just, you know, hey, that's, that's my personal decision. You have a blessed day. And just be done with it. Okay. The next question is how long does your school day last? So I've said it a couple times before, but you know how that goes. Um, our school day typically lasts about four to five hours a day. We spend about 30 to 45 minutes on each subject. Um, we don't go over that. We don't, we don't typically go over that. The only time we go over that is if we're having issues where, um, you know, that I got a kid who is just not, you know, trying to do his work or not trying to focus, whatever the case may be. In that time period, I will stop his timer. So I have a timer for each kid. They have 30 minutes or 45 minutes on that subject, depending upon which kid it is. Um, and they sit there and do their work. But in that midst, in that time period, if I'm watching them and I'm noticing that they're not working or noticing that they're not doing the stuff they're supposed to do, drawing, you know how that goes. I mean, you know, I let them kind of, you know, doodle or, you know, they kind of get distracted. So I'm okay about little distractions. But if it comes a time where they're distracted for more to five or to five or 10 minutes, then I I, I pause their timer and I let them know that I pause their timer. And so then of course that makes longer for the subject because now I've paused their timer until they can get back scheduled back on the course. And sometimes they just you know, okay, mom, I need to stand up, move around, do this. Okay, fine. Stand up. You got five minutes of break. Go take a five minute break, come back to it, and I'll start your timer back up again. So sometimes it can be longer because of that. Um, the next thing is can you break down your daily schedule? So um, my daily schedule is very different. My husband and I are entrepreneurs. We have several businesses um, and we do our business stuff early in the morning. So we get up extremely early in the morning and work um, the first half of the day. The kids kind of kick in like halfway through that period and then they come in and do their schoolwork in that afternoon, early, well, late, let's see, late morning early afternoon ish area so um that's how our day goes and then we go about our day now there are some days because my kids are in um, sports and other activities there are some days that those activities break up the school day and so what we'll do is we'll do as much as we can do before the um activity happens and then we'll go do the activity and we'll come home and we'll finish the rest so time sometimes those make for longer days but that's about it um the next one is my daughter is three. Where should I start with the curriculum? Okay, so your daughter is three. Um, 
If I was you, I would read, 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 read all the time. That would be something I would consistently do. Read all the time, work on the numbers, work on your um, colors, something like that. Like not anything um, too, like not anything too detailed. Like there's no really, you shouldn't be getting curriculum for a three-year-old at this point. Not, not in my opinion, like reading, reading consistently, just read, 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 read. Um, all the time just read you know you read when you get more hey let's read a new book let's go find a new book let's go do this that's what i would do um the next one is what math sh uh, do i suggest now listen i'm not a math teacher i don't claim to be a math teacher i'm not great at math however i follow this lady um her name is shelly and she recommended uh learn math fast which is this book right here and um this book, it's a set of books, and all three of my kids use the exact same set of books. They start off, um, I started them off from the beginning. My daughter is in the pre-algebra book, and my sons are currently using, I think, either level one or level two book. Um, we all use the same books. Um, we make copies of the worksheets so that they can use them. Um, it's, I mean, it's a great, I would recommend it to anyone. It, it goes through everything and it, it, it's not so much, I know it says learn math fast, but to me, it's not about learning math fast. It's more so of uh, getting an understanding of it. And it's crazy to me how all three of my kids who are different learners can use the same set of books and understand what's going on. So I would recommend learn math fast. Um, and there's going to be a link posted with that information. Actually, I think it's in the pinned comments now. Um, the next one would be, how do I deal with late fees at the library? Okay, so, you know, as homeschoolers, we check out books all the time. I don't have late fees on, um, on our books. Not saying that we're not late, because we are, a lot. <laughs> but our, um, our particular library has a thing where you can get a teacher's account. You get a teacher's account and you can check out the book. As long as you wanna check it out, it will be late. However, you will not accumulate late fees. So what I would suggest is, is that you check with your local library and make sure and see if they have a teacher's program of some sort. Now the teacher's thing is only on my account. It's not on the kids. So I have to like, if they wanna check out a book, I have to remind them, hey, you have to check it out with my card so that we won't get charged. Cause we always, always, always hold on to books. We always have them. Um, so that's a way to save money as far as that's concerned. Um, and the next one said, how do you encourage your boys to read? Um, so I told y'all before, we do audiobooks all the time. Like we do audiobooks all the time. But another way to encourage the, re uh, the kids to read is um, stuff like this. This right here was given to them from um, the library for reading a certain amount of books and it's a Chipotle coupon for a free lunch. They love stuff like that. And then another one is Book It. I know some of you know about that. Book It Buddy, um, no, this is Book It Buddy. Book It, Book it Buddy from um, Brahms. And so every time they read, they get to make a sticker or put a sticker on there, whatever the case may be. And this year it's a single dip cone, a kid's meal or a single dip Sunday. And they love ice cream. So they'll read for that. Ooh, mom, can I read some more so I can get another ice cream? Sure, you can read all you want to, go ahead. <laughs> um, and then also Pizza Hut has one as well. So they read a certain amount of books. You sign off that they read a certain amount of books and they get a personal size pizza. So that's something simple that will save you money and also kind of get them involved and excited about reading. I mean, because my boys will read in order to get free stuff. So if that's what it takes to get them to read, so be it. Um, the last thing is someone asked me last week where I got my, my uh, natural hair t-shirt from. And uh, there is a wonderful lady, her name, uh, the name of her business is Shea Creations. Um, and she does amazing natural hair t-shirts, natural hair earrings, like she custom makes them. She does amazing work. So I've also pinned her link in the comments for that. And the last thing, but not least is, don't forget October 10th, at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be having the group coaching sessions for $10 a person. The link to pay for that, the link to uh, sign up for that is all included in the pinned comments. Y'all have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. I actually have to get back because we are not done with schoolwork for the day, so I gotta get back to the kids. But y'all have a wonderful day. I'll see y'all next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Bye.